This is the moment that the Ingenuity helicopter made history, making the first ever powered flight on another planet. It will tell us whether our understanding of how we fly is correct. So that's the only first thing we want to discover. Can we fly on Mars? So we think the math says we can. Our uh, understanding of basic principles say we can. With difficulty, but yes, we can. Now this will be the proof. 290 million kilometers away, NASA's Ingenuity helicopter has taken the first step towards a new type of space exploration. We have been walking on Mars, and there's nothing wrong with that. You need to walk to discover, but now we can run. Before the historic flight, Nature spoke with Dr. Anubhav Datta, who was part of the team that helped test the craft. In terms of range, reach and resolution, it's hard to beat an aircraft that can fly and can fly at low speed in controlled hover mode. Particularly on Mars, the places that we are interested in are up the slope, uh, down the crater, into the caves, on the cliffs. And so those are uh, very inaccessible terrain, especially with no roads and rocky terrain on Mars. But flying on Mars is far from straightforward. Just to be able to carry a flying vehicle 292 million miles and uh, deploy it, unfold it, all in one piece, still alive and beaming, that is an incredible achievement just by itself. We learned how to fly on Earth after eight years of experimentation, trial, error, flight tests, wind tunnel tests, building special wind tunnels. So the first challenge is obvious that we don't have that uh, chance to, to, for trial and error and design, build, fly on another planet. So we have to rely on simulation and our very carefully scaled testing that we can do on Earth and uh, extrapolate our knowledge. But getting to Mars safely is not the only problem. Mars has a much thinner atmosphere than Earth, and that means that the parameters flight relies on, like the viscosity and density of air, are all different. The fundamental ingredient of lift, lift is what keeps airplanes afloat in air, is viscosity. And there is viscosity on Mars, so you can fly on Mars. How much lift you generate depends on density. The Martian atmosphere means that scientists like Data need to think about design completely differently. When you try to design something on the basis of viscosity with very low density, it's, it's a new kind of design that relies on what is, what is called Reynolds number. Reynolds number is related to airflow, but it's not especially relevant to the design of large craft on Earth. Some people interested in insect flight zoom into that number, but in big aircraft we ignore that number. But that number becomes the, the driving factor for Martian design. Ingenuity's design had to contend with a unique set of challenges, different from those faced by craft on Earth. But to an aerospace engineer, these challenges also offered opportunities. If you think in a different way, there are many advantages of flying on Mars. There's low density means low drag, which means you don't have to shape the fuselage or the airframe in a, in a particular, particularly aerodynamic manner. So you can have science instruments sticking all around the aircraft. All you have to do is to let the rotor carry you to where you want to go. That's an enormous benefit. Ingenuity's first flight, three meters up into the Martian air, followed by a 90 degree turn and a safe descent, may not sound like much but its significance for the future of planetary exploration will be felt for years to come. You know, sometimes people think, oh, it'll just pop into the air and maybe not go anywhere. Well, remember, for vertical lift and for helicopters, that's the most difficult mode of flight, the rock-solid hover. And so that's what it's going to try and attempt. So, yes, it's a short flight, but it's by no means a simple flight. In fact, it is the most difficult flight. Oh, the implication is huge. So if we can fly and give a platform to our planetary scientists, an unparalleled platform, 
to have access to all the remote corners and interesting features of Mars that they don't have now. So as I said, it's like uh, we were walking the last 25 years, we have had rovers, we have covered a total of 44 miles in total of flat, uh, simple terrain. Now, all of a sudden, we are opening up this new space. For a long time, you know, conventionally, uh, aeronautics is the tax you pay for space research because you can't get to space or come back from space without aeronautics. But now it can provide a, you know, a launching pad for new exploration in space.